This is The Wheel Weaves Watches, a spoiler-free breakdown podcast of The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. I'm your host, Danny, and I'm joined by my co-host, Brett, and we're here to bring you an in-depth look into The Wheel of Time show on Amazon Prime. We'll share reactions, episode breakdowns, and relevant background information without spoiling future content from the book series. So grab a drink, and let's get watching! We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Light Blinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Neralia, Jordan Gower, and Jeff Searles. In this post-watch immediate reaction episode, we are going to be yelling into the microphone about episode one of season two yeah episode one is a taste of solitude and we're here we did it yeah it's been two years about it's been a heck of a long time yeah i feel like an eternity here but we did it and i am so excited i love it i love it i love it and when you say it's been two years it's been two years since we got a new episode that we haven't seen right we've been re-watching the first season (laughs) over and over all last month and so i feel like and also the last right here the last two years like i haven't left it i haven't left it no 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 but new episode new stuff is happening new information new characters New ever new food new for f- us. That wasn't actually that new. Well, I mean, it's new to the podcast. Okay. Sort of. <laughs> no, it's not because I did make it last time. Did you? Yeah, okay. I did. The bread was different. The bread was slightly different. <laughs> so for our first episode, I continued our tradition of making Wheel of Time themed food for us to eat while we watch the episode. Yeah. And this time around, I made a Two Rivers lamb stew. Love it. Yep, and then I also made some crusty bread. Yes. But it did have some evil-looking black flecks. It did, in the bread. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were they're just poppy seeds, but... Could have been, could have been, you know, weevils or something like that. Gotta pick some weevils out of your flour. Never know, never know. Okay. Just a little nod to the book there. Yeah, a little bit. That's that's a fun little taste on it. It probably tastes better than the weevils would. Oh yeah, it was a delicious bread. It was great. But let's get into it. So we gotta keep it short and sweet because this is the first episode we're doing tonight because we have three episodes released. That's right. So we're gonna watch another one tonight. Yeah. Right? And then the next one probably tomorrow because as you can probably hear, I'm a touch under the weather. Yeah, and you're like really doing a good job of powering through right now. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to try to stay awake. Yeah. I mean, that was, it kept me awake. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. I felt better okay. before. <laughs> Rejuvenated. Yeah. Now, give me a quick recap. How do you feel about being back in season two here? Just like general feelings after you watch the first episode. I'm glad we got that exciting, exciting ending because the entire time yeah. we were kind of chanting about wanting an attack to happen. Oh, I know. I right? know. Yeah. And so I'm really glad that there was a follow through okay. and there was an attack that happened. I'm really happy about that. I'm not in love with the Dark Friend Social. Okay. Right, right off the bat. I wanted it to be more Dark Friend Socially and less about this weirdo kid. Yeah, Although okay, I do okay. have a prediction that the girl who ran away from the attacked camp sure. is actually the girl from the Darfren social. Really? Well, yeah. it was just a girl with brown I feel, hair. So. I feel like this is like the baby situation all over again it from the last episode. It feels like a of baby one. situation. Yeah, it's like yeah. I can't tell the difference between the like babies. Which or baby the... is with what? Yeah, and like which kid is that the same kid? Is it a different kid? I don't, I don't know, know because right off the bat with that dark friend social. Yeah, with well, you that keep girl, saying dark friend social, but like the oh, little meeting. The little meeting at the yeah. very beginning, the cold open. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, book two opens with a meeting, with a meeting of a, a big, bunch of dark it's friends, a bigger meeting. and we call it the dark friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I love that they open with that because it really feels like we're opening book two because that's the prologue. Like For that's sure. you know very true to everything. Except like, what's this kid doing here, I don't and know. why? I want to hear. All the stuff that's happening at the Dark Friend Social. I don't really care about this girl. <laughs> and it's kind of weird. We got a taste. It just wasn't so for me. here's the thing. We got like a bit of a taste, a little bit of a bigger introduction to the fact that the dark one that Rand fought at the end of the like season one here, he's not in fact dead. He's here. And, and he's, he's thriving. He's he doing looks well. excellent. I was pretty sure that he was going to feed that little girl to the Trolloc. Oh, really? I was like 95% sure because he was like, do I look evil to you? And, and he's then, just hungry. Boom, feed her to the Trolloc. Yeah, um, chomp, chomp. That's what I would have done. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah, if I was the evil guy. Yeah, no, because the 
dark one, the evil people, are more about recruiting yeah. than they are about killing. So here we are indoctrinating youth again. Yeah, I love it. And I, I do like that. I do like that for the, the dark side, we'll call them. So, sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, so that's the opening. For the record, we're yeah. going to have to do like a full episode breakdown. But At some point. Later. Yeah. Not now. You know, hopefully it doesn't take two years. Maybe. We'll see what happens. This time around. We'll see but, what happens. Uh, you yeah. know, if they keep if they release the seasons faster, then I'll have more incentive to right. do it sooner. Yes, so. that is what kicked us in the butt this time around. Yeah. yeah. So I want to keep this light and breezy. This episode was kind of like a where are they now episode like getting us caught up to speed where everybody is since last episode and right. we get a time lapse a time lapse it's been yeah. five months five months and it's been we find out one year since the we, show like started the, exactly so we do it's have the time, time lapse. again yeah now why don't we kick it off let's do a quick little <laughs> touch point on maureen and lan sure yeah because the last we left them at the end of season one we had maureen not being able to channel, and it seems like that's a carryover into the season. That is a problem, and it's been a problem for about half a year now Yeah. in the show. Uh-huh. Yep. So she's carrying her own water. She doesn't get the heat up her baths anymore. Oh, my gosh. Manual labor. As soon as I saw that scene, I was feeling I was like, oh, oh no. no. Moderately lukewarm baths. Oh, the worst. gosh. Yeah. It seems to be causing some relationship problems between her and Lan. Well, Lan. yeah. And at one point, the other warder guy yeah. was like, you know, there's other ways for you to communicate. <laughs> you know, but you like, speak English. <laughs> but Lan and Maureen, like, no, there's not. You know, <laughs> yeah. in their relationship, even in season one, we had people commenting on the fact that they'd be terrible dinner guests because they don't talk. Yeah. Even to each other. They just have, like, their own thoughts that go back and forth or, or whatever. Or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit Read each other's feelings. We yeah. know what's going on. We're yeah. good. But now... Now Lan can't read anything that's going on and Maureen isn't used to just saying things out loud. Yeah. And so pretty frustrating. That's frustrating for Lan. For everybody. For everybody involved. Mostly seems just Lan. I want to see what's on that note. I have an inkling, but we're not yeah. gonna, I don't want to talk about that just yet. Yeah. Just in case. But I a thought a poem written in blood. Yeah, we got across introduced across a broken sundial. Pretty cool. Moon dial, I think he called it. Yeah, we got introduced to three new characters here too. So the two Aes Sedai at this little house. Yes. In the countryside, which is pretty cute. Yeah. We have Adelius. Yes. We've got Varen. Yes. And then we got an introduction to an Ilianer boat captain. Oh well, I thought you were also going to talk about the warder named Thomas. Oh yeah, I mean they're that that guy too. Less important. Uh huh. The the captain, the ship captain, Bail Doman. Oh. Who is trying to hustle Moraine, but yeah. then in turn Moraine like hustles Bail him. I like Bail Doman. Yeah. I like the introduction to him. I thought that was a fantastic little hustle too. Yeah. Just to be like, hey, the sea folk might be good at hustling, but I, I said I are invented better. it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, and I bet we see him again. Yeah, and just to kind of circle back here. To the Moraine and Land situation at the end of this episode, I thought, yeah. fantastic fight scene. I really wanted to point out that it seems like maybe two things are happening. Number one, the show in general has really stepped up its Fade fighting scenes. Ooh, because we got yeah. a little introduction to Tom fighting the Fade in season one. Yeah, a little knife and it was like less than ideal to watch. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't the, maybe the best, but here... We didn't here, even really see it. It was kind of like the Fade just sort of like lunging at Tom, and then it was over. Like, it we didn't was. get to see it at all. Now, we had Moraine and Land having like this showdown in the nighttime, and I just think they really stepped up the dangerousness, if I can use that as a word, uh -huh. of the fades. I don't know if it's because it's like danger nighttime. Danger level. The danger level is like mm. threat level midnight here with the fades because it's, I don't know, it's dark out. They can jump between shadows. They're like almost ghost-like. I thought it was so cool yeah, as a nighttime cool. fight sequence. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be as dangerous in the middle of the day because they won't be able to like hop yeah. between shadows. Well, it's interesting too because my first initial reaction was there's this one fade here and then Moraine does an excellent job of getting it. Yeah, she And gets I was him. like, oh my gosh, is she not going to need help here? Yeah. Like, is she, what's going to happen? But then no. Oh, there's like six more. Yeah. <laughs> there's a bunch more fades. Yeah, so I'm wondering if the fact that, like, Lan, really good fighter. We've seen him take down a whole bunch of Trollocs, like, really good. And maybe it's the whole fighting multiple fades at nighttime, which seems at like once, maybe their yeah. peak hour to be super dangerous. Uh -huh. It could be a factor to play here. Yeah, I feel like Lan could have done better. Maybe, maybe. I feel like they did him a little dirty. 
Well, here's the thing. It seems we'll like see. he's been a little off his game for the last six That's months. That's true, too. Doesn't and seem we like know the, that I, warders yeah. do get some certain benefits, and maybe he doesn't have those like heightened skills yeah like anymore yeah like maybe it's a little bit lackluster now that he doesn't really have all the connection with moraine so maybe there's a lot of questions but i thought the fight scene they did with the fades was really cool to watch i okay. enjoyed that one right. thoroughly i also really loved the varin casting oh yeah i think that yeah. that's a good varin definitely definitely yeah. She could be a little bit more spacey. Yeah, more ink on her nose. More but, ink, you yeah. Know. You know, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. I like the character matchups that we've got going on here. It's a little bit a little bit different, but I like it. I think it'll work really well. Yeah. Let's move on because we got more characters to talk about. Next, Perrin and Loyal. Ooh, yeah. I like this one. Okay. With Uno and yeah. what's that guy's name? Yakoda. Yakoda, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we also get introduced to the new guide, yeah. the new tracker. The tracker. Who's also a sniffer. Right. Yeah. And I like that term. He's got yellow eyes. He does. It's Elias. Elias. Yeah. Okay. I, again. Who Perrin immediately clocks <laughs> and is like, yo, man. Yo, man. You Wolfman too? Well, I feel like Elias may have clocked Perrin a little bit because he did the whole like lunging. For- he seemed to be getting yeah, almost yeah. like visions of what of what went down with that camp that got attacked yeah which is like weird like that's not wolf power like, well wolves can't do that no but maybe there's a connection of like maybe the wolves saw what happened maybe and they the know what went down and him? maybe like who knows i don't yeah. know where that's gonna go but there's clearly some sort of connection and it seems like elias picked up on the fact that perrin saw something happening yeah. one thing i did kind of think maybe they're going for perrin's hairstyle and beard seems to be starting to imitate loyal he's been spending a little bit of time with him I'm liking how he's growing it out, and it seems like it's almost like a little bit okay, the same. A okay. little bit the same. Yeah, and also, speaking of loyal, not dead. Not dead. And like zero explanation. He's a big boy. Yeah, but I just wish that he would have been like, it was so great when Nynaeve healed me, you know? <laughs> like, I wish that there was some kind of explanation. Little knife, big dude. Knife didn't go too deep. He's fine. Okay. Checks out. There we go. I know, Let's but move wasn't on. it the cursed dagger? Well, that, that doesn't mean anything to like, us. Like, shouldn't that... That doesn't mean anything to us. I don't know. It feels like it should mean something. doesn't mean anything. We've never seen anything from that. Like so. I said, I would have just appreciated <laughs> some sort of explanation. Yeah, yeah. I do like Uno's cursing. He does a good job. Great. They Like, the whole back and forth between all the soldiers. He's a great Uno. Yeah, that's actor Guy Roberts. I, I like think, him a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. it's that. They've done a really great job there. So mm-hmm. they're on the hunt for the horn, chasing down Fane. Couple of touch points with that. Sad letter from Perrin going to the girls at the tower. Right. It's good. I like it so far. Okay. Let's move on. We got yeah. a couple more people to talk about, then we mm-hmm. got to get into episode two. Okay. So, Egwene and Nynaeve. Yeah. They're in the tower. They're clearly novices. They've been training for five months. And they're basically scrubbing dishes. Scrubbing dishes, which is the building character situation. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's... it's you know, it works. It's, I love all the interactions accurate. with Egwene and Alana. That's oh probably goodness. like my comedic relief of that this was so funny. entire episode. It yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. You know, yeah. you said something during the episode that I think is a really good point to bring up because Egwene, so the whole water thing, the whole cleaning the water thing, number one, oh, I yeah. love the weaves. Yeah. We're getting more dialogue and more explanation for us, the viewer, on how weaves work. So now we're getting more colors in the weaves. We're getting to see the individual weaves, like the the earth is like yeah. yellow the you water what? is blue that's true because we do have several moments of some very intense special effects especially when it we come to the leandra nynaeve scene yeah. and then later with the fire sword and everything and i think that they for sure have stepped up their special effects game yeah i think they stepped it up but also for us the viewers they have to differentiate the fact that there are different weaves we got yeah. an explanation like there's it's earth, not air. just white yeah, yeah, fire, water, like there's different spirits, so maybe we'll get different colors as we get more right. knowledge of how now, that works. Now, talking about the thing that I brought up during yes. the episode while we were watching, so Egwene isn't trying to use her hands to channel, and... Yeah, like she's intentionally not using her hands, yeah, even she though she Yeah, she has them like down by her side, and the other novices are using their hands, and the way Alana showed them to do it, it was using her hands, and then she's like, hey, use your use hands. Your hands. <laughs> And she's like, no, I don't want to do things the easy way. But my point is, 
Last season, we saw Egwene captured by Valda. Yes. Who clearly chops off. I said I hands. I said I hands. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Valda specifically said to Egwene, I've had sisters tell me it's not necessary yeah, to use your hands to channel. It's like channel. a crutch. It's yeah. like a crutch. And so I think that Egwene internalizes that. Good. And then yeah. is trying to learn how to channel without using her hands. Which is good, but also it seems like there's a degree of trauma built into that entire well, and it also yeah. seems like it's a thousand times more difficult to like to not use your hands yeah yeah i mean probably yeah if i was gonna do magic i too would think i would have to use my hands for stuff uh-huh yeah yeah Anyways, and then Nynaeve clearly has issues. She can't channel she's at all. She's so friggin' stubborn, too. Well, I think that she's also scared of it, right? Because She is. It's like the too much power. Because she even says, like, too much power thing. Yeah. Because she's, you know, watched women burn out. And, Absolutely. Yeah. But the whole, her drinking the dirty water. It's <laughs> like, so Nynaeve. I, f- well, I thought she was going to have to do that at the end. I didn't think she was going to, like, be like, watch me do it yeah. at the beginning. But that Except was, as soon as that, that happened, because Alana, Alana was like, oh, you have to drink this water by the end of the day. And then Nynaeve just drinks it and says, you didn't say that it had to be clean and leaves. And I was like, that's what it's like to teach middle school. Yeah. <laughs> In case anybody's wondering. There you go. That's exactly it. Give me the dirty water. I'll drink it. Yes. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. Nynaeve. So I can leave once yeah. it's gone. Okay. It's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty great. I did like the interaction with Leandrin. Leandrin's a shit disturber. Holy moly. Yeah. I love Leandrin. There's like a whole uh, she's little just meeting. such a good love to hate character. Fantastic. But also... The whole like, hey, Nynaeve, there's different ways. The Aes Sedai are going to try and teach you one way, but there's other ways to channel. Use your anger. Use the anger. I'm kind of on board with that. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying. Well, that tracks for Nynaeve too, right? Channeling while angry. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's the whole natural (laughs) state of things, I guess. Yeah. But the fact that Leandrin's picking up on that. But it also seems like they're, Leandra's like not allowed to do any teaching because maybe someone died or something. Not maybe. She said a novice died yeah. when you were teaching her. And it's like too many or too many. Yeah, <laughs> like, even goes, one is well, too many. <laughs> one power is dangerous. We know that. Yeah. So I did like. seem to care. I did like that. Cold, and then cold heart. To cycle back here because Leandrin is up to no good, not just with Nynaeve and Egwene, but also. Oh, with geez, Matt. with Matt. The new Matt is new here. New Matt is in the tower. Digging it. We got to transition this whole plot line somehow. So I like it because that tracks with what Moraine said. Hey, get the Red Aja involved. That's right. It's been, I think you said, six months since he's touched the dagger. So again, time frame makes sense. Yep. And he is locked away. Oh, Andrin's like torturing him, reading this yeah. version of the letter. <laughs> Like psychologically torturing or like, yes. okay. Yes. Well, he's kept in this place and then yeah. reading him this letter. But it's funny because it comes immediately after Nynaeve reads the letter. Yeah. And obviously Leandrin got her hands on this letter beforehand, made a copy. Right. Before giving it to Nynaeve. <laughs> and so, yikes. Yes. Bad and then leaves out alert. the mad stuff. So Yeah, leaves it all out. Leaves the mad because stuff. Because it's a lie. <laughs> he is asking about Matt. Uh, sort of. Talking about Matt at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it said Matt, but she says it's not Matt Coffin. So technically not a lie. Oh, right. Because she's an Aes Sedai and yeah. can't lie. But here's my thing about that. So she's reading the note that she wrote out. Right. And... Technically. She omitted <laughs> the lines about Matt. That also. So this and note so, doesn't have anything about... So she about... goes, see nothing about Matt in here, Matt Love Coffin. It. And so I don't think it it has to do with the last name yeah, so much. That's fair as too. As the you know, way that she does it. She spins it. We so have a couple. She, we yeah. got a couple ways we can get around that one there. Yeah. So, but I, I, again, like Matt's stuck away here. I'm curious if he's going to be able to escape somehow. Oh, we saw him trying to escape. Well, I mean, he's digging away. He's doing like a Shawshank Redemption style, like escape plan, maybe. Yep. Or is that just to like peek out for the candle because it's bell time? Like, it's a little bit. No, no, no. That's escape plan. For he's sure. digging a tunnel with oh, a spoon yes. through he's the wall. Absolutely. Okay. Try- Not with a spoon, with a knife. Yeah. He has a knife somehow. <laughs> yeah. Why? What, is it a letter opener? Maybe that was maybe. left behind. It's hard to say. It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah. But, but the last, yeah, he's busting himself out. Yeah, and he, I'm, I'm here for it. Like, I'm excited. And then the last but not least, this episode had basically no Rand, but we had a little bit of Rand. Oh, only because Egwene and Nynaeve think he's dead. Mm-hmm. They put their lantern out, but he's not dead. He's Turns not out dead. he's not dead. He's and not dead. Shaved his head. 
Right. He looks good. Holy Rad moly. Rad is getting a taste of solitude. Yeah, yeah a by little bit. himself. You know what? I am so excited about where this season's going to go because they gave us like a little bit of a yeah. trailer at the end of this episode yeah, too. Yeah, and I have to tell you, the oh one my thing goodness. that I really picked up on Whew. that was a bunch of flashes from this whole thing. The sex. Was the sex? Sex that's going to happen oh, on yeah. screen? Oh, there's some sex. Maybe? Well, we already kind of got Alana <laughs> and her warders. Just fooling around in bed, fooling yeah. around where Gwen's like all uptight about it. But <laughs> That was <laughs> which, such a good scene. Yeah, Holy funny. moly. But what I picked up on is we see Matt looking out of a brick-sized yeah. hole in a wall. They didn't be like, oh, he got out. It's like, no, he's still he's in there. <laughs> he's just looking out. So Whole I was season. Like, Ooh. Whole season. Here we go. No, no, no. Oh my goodness, yeah. That was such a good little taste of what's coming this season, and I can't wait to get into season two. Yeah, you mean episode two of season two? The rest of season two. They're just to hold everything. Give give me more. Yeah. Give me more. Definite book changes, but then we're also we're also sort not of we're, reminiscent of we're not book that two, far so. we're not that far off. No. Like we aren't actually that far off, and I'm here for it. Yeah. Okay. Let's like let's see where we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited because yep. as we say around here, it's part of the pattern now. Yep, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morset, Lance Barden, Charlie Has, Adam, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, and Eric Reed, with music by Audionautics. Please be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We would love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you, plus you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else, and at the time of recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. You can find all that and more at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses or how to join our Discord or how to get in touch with us, you can visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us. Right now, we are offering to send exclusive merchandise to select people who give us five-star reviews if you leave your username for Instagram or Twitter and I'll reach out to you that way. Also, please be sure to tell a friend, Riyadh, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.